Hello, Zoe here, and it's time for a solo sode. Woohoo! And my big question for you today is what makes good character? And that's what we're going to dive into. Let's do it. Welcome to the Zoe Routh Leadership Podcast, where we explore the future and what this means for your leadership. We ask the big questions. What's happening on the horizon? What does this mean for us? And most importantly, what skills do I need now for leadership of the future? It's time to explore. Let's go. So here on Planet Human, interesting, Startup Anthropic is deciding to train its, uh, its own little AI assistant, Claude, on values and how to make ethical responses. It's, uh, it's called Constitutional AI for Claude, and it's training Claude on, or Claude? Claude? Cla- it's spelled C-L-A-U-D. Claude. Claude. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. Anyway, they're training their AI on documents like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and those kind of major ethical documents to help guide the AI on how to make ethical responses, which is different to other... AIs that are being trained and moderated by humans to help say, oh, no, that's actually a bad decision. That's unethical. So they're going to source documents that in blinding flashes of brilliance that humans we've actually generated in the past. So the whole idea of an AI ethical framework is forcing us to look at our own ethical frameworks. And I think that's super important. Well, here on Planet Zoe, two big pieces of news. I am officially planning and training with some friends to complete the first third of the Australian Alpines walking trail going from south to north, and that's from Valhalla in Victoria to Hotham. It's some 230 kilometers, a lot of up and a lot of down and a lot of tough walking. So that's happening in April of 2024. Very excited. So we've just started our planning, which at the moment consists of Yep, we're going to do it. Let's work out how many food drops we're going to make and how we can get our packs as light as possible. So that's pretty exciting. That's my big news. I even bought a new pair of walking boots. <laughs> I still have like 10 months to train, but it's all good. Um, the second piece of news is that I'm 50% halfway through writing the first draft of Olympus Bound, which is the sequel to the Olympus Project. So that project is chugging along quite nicely. When will you have a book in your hands? Oh, not till the end of 2023 at the earliest. So it is quite a process to get through, but uh, it's in train. So that's pretty exciting. So on to the main topic of the show, what makes good character. And I was reflecting on this as uh, I thought about the last three speakers that we had on on the show, Rohit Bhargava and the author of Future Normal, the co-author of Future Normal. Kamla Shlardi and her take on digital transformation and the fabulous Iman Kibuka Masoki and her take on Gen Z and leadership in the workplace. And I think based on those topics and my reflection on leadership in general, I've come up with a theory of character, what makes good character, especially when, it, when we're talking about leadership for the future and what we're going to need to bring with us into the future. So it actually applies to artificial intelligence and ethical leadership challenges as well. So it comes down to this. Be, think, do. Be, think, do. (laughs) Yes, riveting, I know. Well, let me explain a little bit. Be, think, do, I think, is what we do repeatedly as leaders day in, day out. How we show up, it's the quality of our energy, the depth of our thinking, and the effectiveness of our action. Be, think, do. Specifically, though, when it comes to developing character, the first one is in the beingness, it's all about compassion. And compassion creates kindness. Compassion creates kindness. And I think this is really the first ingredient for great character. In the think category, it's curiosity. And curiosity opens minds. Being curious helps us to see the world better. And the better we see, the better we lead. And the do category, it's about courage. And courage is the heart in action. It's seeing 
and doing things that are challenging and difficult and full of fear and doing them anyway. So courage is the heart in action. And I think these are really sound ingredients to developing good character. And probably the last thing I would add in there, and I've talked a little bit about this on LinkedIn and a couple of my other blogs, where doing hard things doing hard things is a way to develop character. Just like the military makes their people do hard things so they can discover what's in them. Just like Kurt Hahn, the co-founder of Outward Bound said, there's more in you than you think. Plus est en vous is how it's expressed in French. By doing hard things, we discover just how much is in us. And that's probably why one of the reasons I sign up for doing things like the AWT is in these challenges, I work out how much could I do? Could, can I walk 230 kilometers up and down hills in tough conditions? Can I carry that much food? We won't be carrying 16 days of food, but <laughs> we'll be carrying at least nine days at one section. That's a lot of food. That's a lot. That's a big ask. It's a big, tough challenge. And I think by asking the question, what else could I do? It's how we keep exploring. And the explorer's mindset is something I have talked about previously too. And having an explorer's mindset to being curious is, an, is essential to developing good character. So be, think, do, compassion, curiosity, and courage. Compassion creates kindness, curiosity opens the mind, and courage is the heart in action. So what can you do today where you can be compassionate and, and kind? Where can you apply curiosity instead of judgment? And where can you act with courage? That's your takeaways for this week. A couple of book recommendations for you. And uh, they're both guests on the show uh, coming up. Commodore Peter Scott, who has actually been on the show previously, is coming back for a second round because I loved his book, Running Deep. And uh, I just read that book in quick as a flash over two days. It was just so absorbing. And it's a very deep personal account of his experience as a submariner, uh, 20 odd years in the military in Australia, uh, being in charge of submarines and all the way up to Commodore. So Commodore Peter Scott's book, Running Deep, highly recommended. And then the other one is also a military leader's book, very different flavor by Lieutenant Colonel Oak McCullough, Your Leadership Legacy. And this is a beautiful distillation of his pragmatic, practical, and poignant leadership insights. So I recommend those two books to military leaders and two very different contexts and two very different observations, and both are quite inspiring and moving. On the fiction side of things, I've read two really cool books. One, actually, one of them was an audio book. The, the book I read that was a book book, Eye of the Needle by Ken Follett, that was recommended by a previous guest on the show. And I love World War II spy fiction, and this was exceptional. It was so good, so well written, beautifully crafted, nice pacing. It's a story of capturing or the chase to capture a German spy uh, in England during World War II. Very cool. And the other one is by Australian author Matthew Riley, who is an over-the-top action writer. <laughs> and his, I'm laughing because sometimes listening to this audiobook, I did burst out laughing because the scenes were so outrageous and so fabulous as a result. And the book, uh, the audiobook I listened to is called Scarecrow. It's in, he's got a, he's got a series based on uh, Scarecrow. Or what is his, um, what is his name? I can't remember now. No, Schofield. Shane Schofield is the hero. And his call sign is Scarecrow. And uh, all, the, all his books are just breathtaking in terms of the pace, how the hero and his companions get out of these tight spots is amazing. So yeah, a load of fun. So I Have the Needle by Ken Follett and Scarecrow by Matthew Riley. If you want some more bookish news, you can sign up for my bookish occasional e-journal. I'm publishing it about once a month or so. And you just go to my website, zoeroth.com. Click on books and you'll find the bookish e-journal there. You can sign up for free there. And when Terra Blanca comes out, you'll get access to the ebook for free. And when I do the, the audiobook version of that book, it will also be available for free to bookish, uh, bookish newsletter sign-up e-people. <laughs> 
subscribers. That's what I, the word I was looking for. So sign up for Bookish. You'll get the free ebook and you'll get the free audiobook when it's ready, along with my occasional book reviews in the e-journal. All right, that is the short and sweet solo sode for this week. Enjoy your week. In the meantime, live well, lead well. You've been listening to the Zoe Routh Leadership Podcast. To find out more about leadership of the future or to contact Zoe, go to zoerouth.com.